What is up guys it's mason once again and uh today we are going to take a look at uh my round one game from the just ended uh ghana nationals phase one um so i'll just give a brief intro about the tournament and my prep uh but if you are not interested in this part you can just skip to this uh time frame and then uh we'll get started with the game there so um this tournament uh is a like I said, it's a qualifier for the actual national championship. So winning this tournament doesn't make you the national champion. It's the next um, tournament that makes you the national champion. So the top five from this tournament are taken into um, the phase two, where they play the top five, the top five active and highest rated players in the country and try to become the national champion. So it's a nine round tournament, uh, 60 plus, um, 60 plus 30. And um, you need at least six points to qualify. Six, six, six is okay. Six and a half is more confirmed. So the aim is to get six and a half points. And going into this tournament, I wasn't so confident. The point being, I told myself I would try and master end games at the beginning of the year. I've said this many times. Every time I try and start, I'm consistent for like let's say a week or two, then I stop for months. Um, I started moving into different topics, studying pawn structures. Uh, this is actually the first tournament I never actually looked at my opponent's games. Like in previous tournaments, I'd had to look at my opponent's games, see what they play like with their first three moves and try and see if they play moves I'm comfortable with. If not, then I try and find ways and means of like getting myself into a more comfortable structure. But I didn't go into that kind of mindset this time. All I did was, uh, I did a few tactics. I stopped playing tactics every day, but I did a few tactics. Um, studied pawn structures and once in a while went back to the end game and refreshed my mind on the opening. So as I was going to the tournament, I wasn't really prepared. And um, I mean, I had two goals. Either I qualify or I gain uh, lots of points. Of course, one counts with the other. But if I don't get one of them, I can still get the other. So that was kind of like my mindset uh, going to the tournament. So let's see if, or if everything paid off, whether or not I qualified and how um, things went. So for those of you who skipped to this point, welcome. We are going to start with the analysis. So this is day one, round one. We played three games in day one. So day one, round one, my opponent was um, David Ameku. Now, David Ameku, I met him when he was 1,500. Then it, it, it seems he took a break from chess, and then he suddenly shot up when he returned. He became 1,700. So I think this is my second time playing him. The first ever time I played him was in the Blitz tournament. So unfortunately for me, I started playing as black. and. Uh, yeah it means i'm going to get hit with all the pressure in the world and uh david ameku started with um d4 d4 d5 i mean there's nothing more to think about this knight f3 bishop to f5 trying to get my london system of course if he goes for a queen's gambit declined uh we a queen's gambit we go for the declined and we play the normal lines that we, we you, you know me playing he goes c4 e6 knight to c3 we have the queen's gambit declined and now bishop to b4 standard position uh i i still think we are feeling ourselves out here nothing really much going on if anything at all maybe i'm trying to get my uh knight into d7 play h6 get my knight here. this uh, this h6 move is a move that i think magnus Carlsen plays a lot uh preventing the bishop from pinning the knight once you play the knight to f6 uh trying to gain control of the e4 square placing your knight on the e4 square or trying to push e4 e5 in these kind of positions that um i'm used to so we have queen to b3 now i the moment he played queen to b3 i don't think i've ever seen queen to b3 i not like i've not seen it before but in most of the games i play i rarely ever get queen to b3 unless of course my memory serves me wrong but queen to b3 i don't really recall queen to b3 so i didn't know what to do i i at this point i was already okay now what is going on in this position so I just look at the position, I'm like, okay, so what can I just play naturally? That doesn't hurt me so much. Uh, I go knight to c6, uh, bishop to g5. And, and this is something that I do that I hate, right? Um, engine says it's stop move here. Uh, maybe in the next game, I'll bring in the um, evaluation bar. But uh, engine here says I played the best move. But I looked at the board here and I saw something very interesting, which I did play. So I'm not going to go through all the lines. Um, but my idea was very funny in the sense that I would take queen takes, right? 
Now, this guy is sort of um, weak. I would go queen here. And if my opponent, let's see, castles. I'm not so sure if that was a line. I had knight here. And the queen was, in my mind, trapped in some way, shape, or form. Because if you come in here, I play pawn push. You are still, like, having to deal with these issues. Okay, it's not trapped, but this kind of, like, where my mindset was. This looked very good for me, if I could get this kind of position. Rav, castles may not be the be best move here, but you, you could see where my mind was going. It, it, it felt like I could make the queen useless. So, that's actually what I went for. Takes, takes, queen to b6. And my opponent plays... The move, I mean, that stops it. E3. E3, knight jumps into A5. And then queen goes into E3. And I like my position now. I feel like I've solved my problems. With the aggression that you normally get from this kind of opening. But there's something I don't like. And it's my knight here. And maybe I could go like C5. Force a take. And then bring my knight back quickly. And not have to deal with this position so much. I mean, I was thinking about so many things. Another interesting thing, I plan I had here was like, if you play pawn push, I had knight here. <laughs> Very funny moves, and the, the the rook would have to think about doing something else. I don't know what to do. It. But that's kind of like where my mindset was. Of course, here is not really that big of a deal, but my mindset was around those those um, lines. Um, David goes. I, I go h6. The bishop comes back attacking the queen, which I also wanted, and I went queen to b6. Again, trying to put some pressure on my opponent's queen side. You can see my bishop does a good job over here. Now that his queen is here, it's going to be very difficult for his bishop to counteract my bishop. And maybe I could, like, get my knight in here, castle king side, bring my rooks in, and then launch something on the queen side. That is kind of like how my mindset is going at this point. Um, my opponent plays queen to b5, and I trade. Um, I play c6 first, and I trade. Now, I trade because of two things. It re resembles a Scandinavian, and I feel like this is an okay position in the Scandinavian that I can play. And I felt, okay, I could go c5, or I could, in a way, try and get my knight out of the position, especially with a move like this, if, if it would work. <laughs> yeah, but that's kind of like what I was thinking about. Um, my opponent plays rook to c1. I develop my knight to f6. I, I really do think maybe here would have been better. Of course, you can still get to the same squares, but maybe there would have been better. So knight to f6, uh, knight to d2, I did not see. Like, I calculated so many lines of my opponent pushing e4, and I thought, oh, I can just take, and then this pawn four. Like, so many funny lines uh, that were happening here. But knight to d2, I did not see, and it seemed to put a damper on my um, position in my mind. I, 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 I really could not tell. I felt I was fine, but I, I was still kind of worried about e4. I don't know how powerful e4 is now. Like, throughout the game, I was thinking about e4, and I was thinking, okay, I can deal with e4. But now it's very difficult to deal with e4, because the thing about e4 is that I have this initial move, and if you take, I take, right? I'm, I'm kind of cool. I'm kind of cool in this position. Um, but now with this, with the knight coming in here, if I do take, so, so if my opponent does push e4, Okay, it's not his move, but let's just castle, let's say, for me. And he pushes e4. Bishop takes, pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes. And uh, I feel like my opponent is completely fine here. Engine says my analysis is wrong. I do not doubt that my analysis is wrong. Yeah, but there was something along those lines I was, I was kind of worried about. So it seems my mindset was very wrong um, in, this, in this game. So, yeah, I think I was completely fine, but I was seeing ghosts, I guess. Oh, I was very tired. Okay, maybe I was very tired that day. But anyways, uh, this is kind of what I was um, thinking about. I was kind of really worried about E4. And for, for that reason, I was like a little bit like my, my thinking was all focused on E4 and how to stop E4. Uh, so I went C5. C5 has two reasons. Uh, if my opponent takes, I fix my pawn structure and now my knights can gain access to the C6 uh, square, which is better than where it actually is now. Uh, my opponent takes. I don't take with the bishop. I want to fix my structure. Uh, but the engine, uh, yeah. The engine thinks that's the best move. Uh, then my opponent plays uh, a3. a3 is fine. Bishop takes, rook takes. And then I could, I could have simply played rook here. And after playing this, maybe come in this way. Or I could have also just decided to go knight to d7. 
trying to find a way to bring this rook knight and make him active as compared to where he is now so but that's not what i did i went b6 uh, bishop comes into b5 check and now that the queens are off the board my king can stay in the center and it's fine uh engine gives the position 0 0.4 it's still an evenish position but here i feel like i'm lost i i feel like the moment this move b4 comes in i'm in trouble so in this position i'm considering a move like knight to d5 because it adds a defender to this square but th th there was one funny thought that came to my mind for some reason i was so caught up in putting my rook on this open file that i was totally averse to placing my knight here i just felt that if i place my knight here i'm sorry i guess for life i place my knight here i'm losing control of the of the file and my opponent can castle so having that in mind i was like you know what um let me just uh try not to take over the file but my opponent does uh, play rook back and i play rook to c8 now knight here would possibly be fine of course pawn push is met with takes if you take i take back it's fine all right so and it, it kind of slows down his idea of pushing b4 in my opinion so um i play rook a to c8 my opponent brings his king up connecting his rooks and then i play g5 now i was really trying to push something i was really trying to push uh by playing this move but uh it rather caused me more problems so after playing this move bishop comes in rook comes into d1 my opponent finally plays the move b4 now you see here that b4 is an inaccuracy but to me i had lost here in my mind i had lost here and i was going to get hammered down on the queen side my opponent would have one pass pawn here and i'd have to spend my whole time defending it and it would be so easy for him um to defend this position because he just brings his rooks in and he's fine uh with the position now the why this is actually a safe position is, is a tactic i did not see uh, of course like takes takes right and you have this and the point is that the king takes check if the king goes uh back you can take with the knight you can take with the... anyone is fine right so that is the reason why this position is fine but have it in mind i did not see that tactic and i did not know that tactic again. right so my opponent plays this move i take he takes i play knight to g or attacking the bishop so now you see that if I had seen this tactic, my position is completely fine. But I hadn't seen the tactic, so I was a little bit like worried and concerned about my position. Uh, my opponent plays the move bishop to c7. I mean, he could have traded first and tried something from there. But I played bishop. I played uh, rook to b d5. Again, the move is rook takes. I did not see the tactic. That's, that's what you should get from this. I did not see the tactic. So I'm playing with the mindset that that tactic does not exist. In other words, I'm playing a losing position. If I had the mindset that the tactic existed, I was in a comfortable like position in a sense. So I played rook to d5, targeting the bishop. Bishop moves into a5, attacking my knight. Rook moves into a8, attacking the bishop. My opponent finally plays the move e4, forking my bishop and my knight. And funny enough, the moment my opponent played bishop to a6, and I I thought about it, like the moment he played it and I played rook to a8, I suddenly, I suddenly saw the tactic. So my opponent pushed e4 and I did not even hesitate. I went rook takes, king takes. Okay, I was expecting king takes and then knight jumps in, right? That's kind of what I was expecting. But uh so yeah, chess.com gave me a brilliancy here. I am good. So yeah, rook takes d2 check. Uh then my opponent decided to go king to f3, which possibly probably was not the best. I think he should have just lost it uh here. Because check, maybe I don't know. You'd want to stay around and you could allow this in if if i would also i mean i could also take this if i wanted yeah but the position just becomes even uh i don't think i'm winning here uh i don't, I don't think i'm winning here am i yeah i'm not winning here i just managed to save the game uh in this position but my opponent uh i don't know for some reason decided to go um king to f3 which makes this position very easily winning 
it should be easily winning but i had a problem my time was very low and i couldn't really figure out the position so at a point i was playing on um autopilot i was just trying to figure things out without like and i really liked my decision in this game i played rook takes f3 my opponent went uh to g3 then i took with my bishop king takes rook takes king comes up pawn push king comes in here and then here this this at this point i think i was around three minutes and i thought till i reached the one minute mark and i was trying like with everything in me to find a meat and i just couldn't find the meat and i i just told myself maybe there's no meat you know sometimes when you get this type of position you're always like okay i'm i, I have a meat i'm winning but I was like, maybe the, maybe there's no meat. Like, maybe there's no meat. I'm just trying to make a meat. Maybe there's just no meat. So I decided, okay, let's just take the bishop. He takes my knight. And I take his pawn. And now that I take his pawn with my rook that can slide up over here, I realize that I have, after bishop takes, I have rook here, bishop here, and then rook here, checkmate. Of course, there are other things that could be done uh for example like if okay the the point being here that if we do trade off everything i have three past pawns i have sorry i have four versus one and that's still the call for my opponent to win so in this uh position um he, he resigned after rook takes a5 um he resigned the game i was so happy he resigned the game uh because i didn't know if i was like i could play with the time left of course, there was a 30 second increment, but I, I still wasn't so sure um, of myself. But that was a good game one. Um, uh, I, I should have lost that. Um, you, you see consistent themes in my games. Um, you see consistent themes in my games in that sometimes I have like a loss of focus or I, like I see my opponent's threats and I ignore it and it becomes a problem or i create a problem for myself and rather than solve it immediately i leave the problem there and it becomes worse and i miss tactics sometimes right it's 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 a very consistent theme in the games i played um in this in this tournament but all in all i'm just happy that we managed to um get off with a win uh first game i wasn't uh, all that happy because getting a win in the first game means that you're going to be playing strong people right if you lose your first game you're still going to be playing strong for you, you you would have to lose two games before you face someone who's like uh significantly weaker than you so i was a little bit worried that okay fine i beat the 1700 i get 36 rating points but uh I, I don't know how the next games are going to go so it's kind of exciting to see and this new philosophy that i was working in kind of helped me a lot i don't spend too much time on the board i i do like if i think there's something significant on the board i do spend some time on it but once i think i've figured out every basic thing i need to do um then i just leave the board and i stand somewhere i normally walk around but i'm not really i, I like i'm looking at people's games that i literally don't even care about their games i i just want to every single time come to the board with a fresh mind right uh it did have some kind of bad effect but throughout this tournament i think it really worked for me i kind of think i understand the pomniachi nowadays right so it was a very uh wonderful first game and yeah so um we'll end this video here i'll record the second round i'll make them separate videos not one video because that'd be too long so if you do like these uh videos remember to like comment and subscribe and uh I'll see you guys in the next video where we go into day, day one round two where I play against Edward Thompson, my chess teacher from primary school. Thank you guys so much for watching. Oh yes, and you can catch me live Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays on my, on my stream, twitch.tv forward slash pen underscore Mason. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.